And how do we track success? So Aaron and I sometimes say that this is rocking chair work and we may not see, you know, all of our success until we're a little bit older and it's it's these kids, kids who come to school and and we see changes in some of those breaks in generational poverty. And if if you work in poverty, you know that it is some of the hardest work to change mindset, to change mm -hmm. behaviors. And um, but some of the success that we see is so exciting and it's it's a lot of stories. Um, I think the success of our district is showing through some of our numbers and that sort of data. But when I first started, the first kiddo that I ever worked with literally lived in a shack two and a half miles back in a trailer park. He was not going to make it, him or his sister. I mean, it was constant absences, just they never had food. They had head lice like you would not believe. I spent, when I first started, I spent hours combing out this girl's hair from lice and just everyone really wrapped their arms around this kid the both of these kids um coaches he is going to leave on july 22nd to go to the military and in san francisco he's going to basic training and so while it wasn't just like such a success story like this it was like this and we had a couple of times where i was like i failed him i failed you know he's He's not going to make it. And just to see those things like that kiddo is going to go, he's going to go to San Francisco. He's going to do amazing things in the military. He wants to come back someday and be a coach here in our district and teach kids and coach football. And, you know, you just see some of that and it just, it really mm -hmm. warms your heart to see, see success. And, and there are hard days. So um, I will tell on Megan a smidge. There was a, a girl that we poured tons of energy into and Megan came to my office one day, uh, you know, not long ago, crying about, I don't think I'm any good at this. What am I even doing? She's pregnant. She's pregnant. Everything we've done is just, and, and that is a hard one where you're like, so what were we doing? How, you know, did this work? And now she's a teacher in a neighboring district. And you're like, it, it is so up and down and two steps forward and three steps back but the end goal is still worth the, the fight. But if you measure in um, quantifiable things, you'll probably feel like you've, you've not done a good enough job. If you're measuring the quality of things, you know, then you're going to see the successes. Okay. And I just wanted to put in, my mom was a, for 58 years, a first grade teacher in a very poor district. And a lot of this work is motivated from the idea that we used to go to the Walmart in the small town near where that school district was, and she would see teen parents with kids clearly living in poverty, saying, "Miss, you know, Mrs. Styles." And my mom had had them in first grade, and she she would say as they walked away, "They never had a chance." I could tell in first grade that they would not have a chance. And this is about giving kids a chance. We're not saying you're successful with every kid, but every child <laughs> deserves the opportunity for success.